What trends are we expecting from the JSC All Share? And let's be stock specific now. We've spoken about the, the general themes that we could see over the, the markets as we move into 2010, but the themes on the stock market in terms of individual stocks. Simon, what are you expecting the outperformers to be? I think the outperformers are largely going to be resource stocks, but in the comment, and I think it's been made by Derek, and it, it was uh, at Cape Town, we're going to see volatility. I mean, what we didn't get last year is we kept on saying from about June, Where's this pullback? It, it just didn't happen. It didn't come through at all. And I think we're going to see it now. I mean, we, we, we over the year, it's probably going to be good returns, but I think some investors are going to have to take some brave decisions. I think we're going to see stocks running. I think we're going to see some strong pullbacks in that space. So I'd be looking, and there it's platinum stocks, it's Billiton, it's Sassel, and the but like. But you're looking for those pullbacks in the platinum stocks in the BHP Billiton before you deploy money, or, or do you think you need to deploy now? I, I, would, I would look for pullback. I mean, I look at oil in particular. All above 80, I think, has gone too far. I, I, I don't think it's sustainable at that level. I think oil will come back. I even think platinum two degrees gone too far. I think we need to see some sort of, I think the levels can, can perhaps by the end of the year it can be there but in the short term I'm thinking I'd be looking for a pullback. Are you looking for this pullback and, and how significant could it be? It's uh, quite, a, quite a tough question to ask Bronwyn and uh, I mean coming back here last year when we used to ch uh, chat about uh, where the top in this market is a lot of people tried calling a top in this market at uh, 24 and a half, 25,000 and it sits here tonight at uh, over 28,000 points. And, uh, you know, when a market is trending and the momentum is on the upside, be very careful trying to call a top. I think within the next two weeks, it's going to be a very telling time. Uh, the market's uh, really bottlenecking into a very pinnacle point at the moment where we're going to either get a very strong, decisive move up towards 30 and possibly test that all-time high, or we're going to see some form of consolidation and a little bit of a correction and, you know, possibly see that weakness. But personally... You know, the trend is your friend and we're trending upwards. The trend is your friend and we're trending upwards. We heard that a lot at the end of last year as well. But if we look at the, the trend, we're 16% off for the all-time high. We made 29% if you got in at the lows in, in March over 2009. You can't expect spectacular returns on this market. At the most, what's a long-term average, about 14%? Uh, probably a little bit higher, but, but you're right, you can't. I mean, and this year, and I think your guest, uh, Peter Major, was saying, I think he said 10 or 12% um, for the market as a whole, let's say the top 40 or the all share for 2010. Um, a little op optimistic, I think we might get 15% for the year. But I mean, and we commented late last year. It's that still better than cash, isn't it? It's still better than cash. And the easy money was, was, was made last year, pretty much. I think the worst perform in the top 40 was Telcom up 3%. That excluded dividends that you got, not the the, the, the Vodacom. So it, it, it was easy last year. Now we've got to get down to that stock selection. We've got to be a little bit more smart about it. Um, and, and I think we're going to start seeing some volatility. The trend is up. Absolutely, momentum is there and it's your friend. But I think we're going to find it a little bit. It's not going to be as easy this year as it was last year. The, the, the top performing stocks, we did see that data out last week. Did you get, get a chance to have a look at it? Or am I? To be honest, I haven't had a look at it just yet. NASPASS is one of them, up 80%. <laughs> percent um, Aspen? If, if Aspen. we look at top 40, it was NASPASS, it was Aspen. If we move a little bit out of there, we had stocks like uh, uh, um, the, 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 the market, the, the, the bank. Um, the, uh, oh, Able. Not Able, no, no, no. the other one. Um, no, my mind's gone completely. <laughs> so is mine. I, but I mean, it, it, was, it was NASPASS. And I like yeah. NASPASS. It's run hard. It's on a high PE, PE of uh, 35, 38 or something around there. But it's their, it's their, their emerging market, their Asia exposure, their China. And I think that's where they're going to see some really good growth there. Aspen, you know, drug stocks, Aspen's been a it's been massive, massive good story. It's a defensive stock. Defensive stocks shouldn't do that well. They should kind of like hang around. But it, it, they're in the right place. They're doing incredibly well. They've got good products. And I think I'm always a fan of that momentum. It's there. We can argue the pros and cons. But you've got to say it's rocking. People are buying it. Um, and I'm not scared, particularly in the NASPES, of that, you know, that high PE. Because I think they can yeah, be we're sitting at 289 around 88 on the NASPES. 80%. 80% up over, over 2009, as we said. In your opinion, more momentum, more upside on NASPAS? Well, it comes down to a question of portfolio management. If you've been holding the stock from lower levels under the 200 Rand mark, and uh, that, that uh, stock now makes up, let's say, 15%, and it's moved from 8% to now 15% or 16% to your portfolio, then there's got to be some portfolio management that needs to take place, and you've got to take a couple of chips off the table. If you're asking me whether I'd add it to my long-term portfolio, I agree. I think you can actually go in around these levels. 289 industrial sector came off today. I'm still bullish on the story. I think earnings are going forward could surprise and give you some positive outlook. 
Very quickly, uh, FNB uh, First Rand has said that it's going to buy one of the nine Nigerian banks that was bailed uh, that were bailed out by the Nigerian Central Bank. That was for some four billion dollars that happened in around about August, September, October. They're being aggressive now with their movement into Africa. We haven't seen this before from First Rand. And I think that's the point. They're being aggressive. And is it the beginning of something or will it be a sort of one move? I mean, are they going to take Africa and start doing a lot more activity in Africa? They haven't in the past. I think it's an area they've been weak in. Um, and I think it is the beginning of something for them. Is this a positive story for First Rand? I think it is. I think at the moment, uh, generally, the South African market could uh, sort of seem to be quite saturated. And there's got to be some sort of an aggressive outlook for a lot of companies, not just the banks. And, uh, you know, Africa is best place for that. It's very high risk, but obviously risk and return go hand in hand. I think it's a good story.